Uh, which one of you is Sue Allen? Hi. My name is Sharona, and this is my friend, Mr. Monk. He just wants to ask you a couple of questions uh, about what you saw the night that the judge was, um... Brutally slain. Yeah, that's right. Is he a policeman? He was. What happened? I had a breakdown. I was nearly catatonic for about three and a half years. I already talked to the real police. Three times. I know, but Mr. Monk has a different way of looking at things. Make them buy some lemonade. I'll only talk if you buy some lemonade. That's the rule. Oh, okay. No, he has to buy some, too. Yeah, no, uh, no, no, no thanks. No. Buy some lemonade. Okay, fine. Uh, just have a small, it's very, very small. Yeah, that's... It's our own recipe. Mm, that hit the spot. Thank you. Okay, now, now it's your turn. I want you to think back to that night. You were walking your dog? Yeah, I was walking my dog by the big house over there, like I do every night. The smoke alarm went off, so I looked. And? What did you see? You familiar with the term extortion? So I looked, and I saw this really fat guy in the house. No, I mean like really fat, like fat, fat. Yeah, fat. Then he opened the curtains and stood on a chair and turned off the alarm. Okay, Sue Ellen, I, I just want to be absolutely sure. The alarm sounded, and then you saw the curtains open up? Right, the smoke alarm, and then the curtains. Yep. Why would he open the curtains before he turns off the alarm? He was putting on a show. What kind of show? He's putting on a show for you. It's Captain Stottlemyre. Hello, Mr. Biderbeck. Captain, I really wish you would have called. I'm a little busy at the moment. I'm here to arrest you for the murder of Judge Kate Lavinio. That's a warrant. Duly sworn. Sweetheart, I'm gonna have to call you back. Doctor, will you call Howard Klein and tell him we're suing the city for malicious prosecution again? I have hired a local construction company to take out this door. We're gonna get a crane in here and lower your fat ass down to the street. A crane? Oh, that's rich. But would you mind explaining to me how I'm supposed to have killed the bitch I can't leave this room, remember? Mr. Monk! Well, my, 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 it's the defective detective once more. Lay it on me, Einstein. These two chairs are from the judge's house. The killer stood on one of them when he turned off the smoke alarm. A girl in the neighborhood saw, quote, a very, very fat man standing on it. But there's something funny about the chair. It's not broken. This is Sergeant Cargill from the 14th Precinct. Sergeant, how much do you weigh? 265. Would you mind? So how could a very, very fat man have stood on it? There's only one explanation. He was a fat man. Not a heavy man. Lieutenant! I visited your clinic today and borrowed one of your empathy suits. Fat, but not heavy. I believe we have another warrant to serve. You're joking. You were in it together. 
You killed her. The fat man planned it, but you did it. It was brilliant. You killed her, and then you left clues behind to make it look like Biderbeck did it. Why? Because he's the only person on Earth who couldn't possibly have done it. You wore enormous boots to leave big footprints. Breaking in was no problem. The housekeeper told you about the hide key. I admit I was confused until I figured out the sequence of events. First, you killed the judge. <coughs> then, you ransacked the house. Of course, you needed a witness. You put on one of your fat suits, set off the alarm, and then waited until you were sure somebody was watching. And finally, you called 911. And you're great with voices, Doc. We've all heard you. Spiderbeck even supplied you with videotapes of the judge so you could practice. This is insane. Why would I risk everything? Well, you really didn't have a choice, did you, Glenn? I knew Christiane wasn't your real name as soon as you said you were 37 years old. You told Sharona that you were named after Christiane Barnard, but he wasn't famous until 1967, after you were born. I put the FBI on it. They were looking for you. Your real name is Glenn Q. Sindel. You killed a child five years ago. Accident. You were operating on her so doped up you couldn't see straight. Accident. Convicted of manslaughter and reckless endangerment, you were looking at 15 years minimum. You jumped bail before sentencing, and then you disappeared. Oh, oh. Until now. And somehow, somehow, Beiderbeck learned your secret, and from that moment on, he owned you, didn't he? Listen, I, I just have to say, fantastic work, really. Both of you, kudos. And, and for the record, I am shocked, shocked that my personal physician is both a fugitive and a cold-blooded killer, shocked. But you can't really tie me to the crime, can you? Well, now that really depends on Mr. Sindel. What do you say, Glenn? Would you like to talk to us? It will be my pleasure. I'm looking forward to testifying against you. Maybe once and for all I can redeem myself for everything I've done. All the pain I've caused. I detest you. Do you? With every fiber of my being. It's jungle out there. Disorder and confusion everywhere. No one seems to care. Well, I do. Hey, who's in charge here? It's jungle out.